Another interesting question. This all comes from people asking me, why must long antennas be long? What I mean by long antennas, things like Yagi's LPDA helices. I was actually asked the question about the helix. Why can't we just scrunch it up and, you know, why do we have to stretch it out? Long antennas are technically known as end fire rays. Let me first speak. You get long antennas and then you get flat antennas, okay? Flat antennas, typically rays, they look like this and they may have many elements here. Uh, you first need to understand this one. Flat antennas, the area, bigger the area, the bigger the gain. There's a direct relationship between what's known as the effective aperture and the gain of an antenna. Effective aperture equal to g lambda squared on 4 pi. Now these, that's wavelength, that's just numbers. So you can see that aperture is proportional to gain. If you now look at long antennas, they haven't got aperture. Okay, if I look at the Yagi, um, from the front, because this is aperture as the wave is coming towards it, and there it makes sense. The aperture makes sense on a flat antenna. Wave is coming, it will only capture this much of the wave. Okay, but a, a yagi, if that's a dipole, okay, I'm looking from the front, a yagi is just many dipoles all behind each other. So this is a yagi dipole. A dipole, if you look at its effective aperture, is about this much. It grabs a little bit of the energy around it. Okay, so. It, even though it's got virtually zero aperture, it grabs a Yagi could have an aperture like this. How on earth is that possible? Okay, and that's why they have to be long. So if I look at a Yagi, that's my favorite example. Dang, 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 dang. They are all lots of dipoles. And by the way, a long antenna, like all things, if you double the area of a flat antenna, you get 3 dB more gain. If you double the length of a long antenna, you get 3 dB more gain, okay? So as they get longer, beam gets narrower and the area of energy. But how does this guy grab so much energy when a dark pole only grabs this much? And I love this. So say that's that area. Let's sort of imagine that's from the side. We're now looking from the side. That was looking from the front. Now it comes, comes the wave, okay? And this guy here, it eats this much out of the wave. It, 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 like, it consumes. What does the wave do when it's a vacuum created in the middle? It, it has to sort of come in, okay? The second one eats a little bit. It has to come in. It, it falls inwards. And, and this is what happens. Okay, so each one eats out a little bit of the wave. It sort of chows in the middle. Um, so the first one, they only get that area. But because it's taken it out and the wave needs to carry on, the wave will, of course, go inwards. I think we all understand when you take the fraction things we do at school, you know, if you put a little thing in front of a water wave, you'll see that it starts turning inwards. So we are actually focusing the wave and that's why it ultimately, the guy that was too far away comes close enough to be grabbed by the last element. And if you make more of them, of course you can see that you'll get a bigger area because it starts chomping here. Okay? And the same happens to the LPDAs, slightly different concept because not all of its element will be eating, only the ones that's at the right frequency. And the Healy the same. So Healy antenna is actually just a set of loops. Okay, it's actually an array of loops that's self-connected to each other. And of course, the first loop will chow out a bit of the energy. And that's why you can't compress it, because if you compress it, you can't let this happen. Um, I hope that makes sense.